Hello everyone, my name is uh, Stefan Rosenkranz, uh, University Hospital Cologne, um, and together with my colleague from London, Luke Howard from Hammersmith Hospital Imperial College, um, we will show you how to do a right heart catheterization today. So for the purpose of uh, right heart catheterization, we use a catheter that we put through the right heart into the pulmonary artery. Um, and the, for the purpose of demonstration, we will show you two different catheters that may be uh, used. One, and that is this one, um, has a single lumen and it has a balloon at the tip and you can blow up the balloon. It looks like this. Um, and you use the balloon for two uh, purposes. One is to flotate the catheter to where it should be and the other one is for measuring the pulmonary arterial occlusion pressure. And look, what about the second one? And this is the second catheter, like the first. It also has a balloon on the end of the catheter for the same purpose. It has a distal uh, port for one of the lumens, and it also has a proximal port. So if I inject through the proximal port, you can see it coming out at the 30 centimeter mark. And the purpose of this is to inject cold saline through this, such that uh, by using the temperature sensor uh, at the end of the catheter, we can measure cardiac output by a thermodilution technique. Okay, so there are different ways uh, to get access to the venous system. In this case, uh, we will puncture the femoral vein. So we put the needle in. So we have And then through this wire, I pull the needle back and then over the guide wire, I introduce a 7F sheath into the vessel. Okay. So now we insert the single lumen catheter into the sheath. push it forward, okay, and then we can use fluoroscopy to see where we are. So now the catheter is in the vessel and here in this position we blow up the balloon, we can see this here, and then I just push the catheter further in through the inferior vena cava and then we go through the right atrium and the right ventricle hopefully directly into the pulmonary artery. So here we go. And then I push the catheter further in until the balloon gets into a stable position. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we get everything connected and uh, look, um, I think it's quite important that uh, the transducer in the, is in the correct height and that we do a proper zeroing. Yeah, absolutely, Stefan. Uh, we know that there's a critical cut point between pre and post capillary pulmonary hypertension at 15 millimeters of mercury, so it's absolutely important we get the zero right. And the standard would be to have the zero point at the mid thoracic level. Uh, so it's important that we get that, uh, that transducer at the same level uh, as mid-thoracic. Yes, and then we have to calibrate the system. So we open it to the atmosphere. Okay, so now we have a proper zeroing. And then we then start recording the pressure. So here we have obviously a pulmonary artery pressure curve. So we are now um, uh, in the wedge position and what we see here is the wedge pressure. And uh, look, it, it goes up and down. Why does it go up and down? So there's clearly quite a big variation here and it goes up and down in accordance with the intrathoracic pressure. Uh, so on inspiration, the pressure will drop because there's a negative intrathoracic pressure and the reverse happens on expiration. And ideally, really, what you're looking at is the, the stable end expiratory phase as the uh, as the, the reflection of the, uh, the true wedge pressure. Okay. 
So I think it's a good quality signal if you do have these uh, respiratory variations, but uh, we should read the pressure at the end of normal expiration. Correct. So here we are still in the pulmonary artery wedge position and we'll now do a pullback. We will deflate the balloon and pull the tip of the catheter back and now the pressure curve changes from the pulmonary artery wedge pressure to the pulmonary artery pressure curve. Here we see the pulmonary artery pressure curve. We see the um, systolic and the diastolic PA pressure um, and uh, uh, we will then from that calculate the pulmonary arterial mean pressure mm -hmm. uh, by which pulmonary hypertension is defined. Yes. And you can see again on this trace the inspiratory and expiratory swing. Exactly. So once we are in the pulmonary artery position, it's important to draw some blood and get a blood sample um, in order to measure oxygen saturation within the pulmonary artery. So. We aspirate a bit of blood, then we get our blood sample, which will then be analyzed particularly for oxygen saturation. So why do we do that, Luke? Well, Oxygen saturation in the mixed venous blood is an index of cardiac output. So the lower the oxygen, mixed venous oxygen saturation, the lower the cardiac output. So you can use that with the direct fit method to calculate cardiac output if you know the systemic saturations and you know the pulmonary artery saturations. But importantly, you also need to know uh, and therefore measure the oxygen consumption, which is why some people also use the thermodilution method to calculate cardiac output. Uh, as it does not require measured oxygen uh, consumption. Mm -hmm. And I guess one other reason why we do that and w why we have to know oxygen saturation um, in the pulmonary artery um, is to either diagnose or exclude more or less a cardiac or, or extra cardiac shunt. Yeah, sure. So when you, um, you have that measurement, if it's a particularly high measurement, you might at that stage already suspect a shunt. But as, about, as you're about to demonstrate, when we take the pulmonary artery saturation and then go back and measure the mixed venous from the SVC and IVC combined, at that point we can calculate uh, whatever uh, left, left to right shunt there might be in the cardiopulmonary circulation. Yes, and I would view this as very important in order to not miss any uh, shunt because that could lead to a misdiagnosis. Misdiagnosis and completely the, the wrong sort of therapy. So next I will pull back the tip of the catheter from the pulmonary artery into the right ventricle and you can recognize the change of the pressure curve from the PA pressure curve to the RV pressure curve. We see that on the screen and then we pull it further back from the RV into the right atrium and now we see the change from the RV pressure curve to the RA pressure curve. You can take that analysis offline to measure any pressure gradients that there may be uh, across the pulmonary yes. valve, for example. Yes, so measurement of the parameters is one thing, but then we have to calculate other gradients and, and, and uh, variables to get the full set of hemodynamics. So we are now using the other catheter that has the double lumen, as uh, Dr. Howard explained to you earlier, to measure cardiac output by the thermodilution method. So we have to connect the system. So what I'm going to do is take ice cold uh, saline from my colleague here. So Luke, why am I doing this? So you, you really want to know what the pulmonary flow is in order to calculate the pulmonary vascular resistance. You've measured already the pulmonary artery pressure. You've measured the, uh, the, the mean wedge pressure. So that gives you the, uh, the pressure difference across the pulmonary circulation. All you need now to know is the flow across the pulmonary circulation in order to measure the pulmonary vascular resistance. So injecting cold saline here in the proximal port, you will measure the temperature, the thermos. And how many times should we do that? Really, you should do it three times. You want to get three consistent measurements. And consistent means that the single values should not be more different than uh, 10%. This so. is the uh, second measurement. It's coming up on screen now.
ready for injection. So here comes number three. And you can see the signal now on the screen. So the first measurement we had was 3.2, the second was 3.2, and this is now 2.9. So we are just within 10% uh, with those three readings. Are we satisfied? We're I guess satisfied. so. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we now got the full set of hemodynamic variables that we wanted uh, to measure, and we see the summary now here on the screen. Um, and look, how should we interpret this? Well, so we have a, an elevated mean pulmonary artery pressure of 33, so that's moderately elevated, but we have a pulmonary wedge pressure of 12, so that's less than 15, so we have pre-capillary pulmonary hemodynamics. We have a cardiac output of 3.1 when we average the uh, thermal dilution uh, data, which gives us a cardiac index of 1.93. So if we want to calculate the pulmonary vascular resistance, we take 12 away from 33, which gives us 21, and we divide by 3.1. So we have a pulmonary vascular resistance of approximately 7 mil units. Okay, so it should be clear that we need the full set of hemodynamic variables, not only the PA pressure, but we need measurement of uh, cardiac output and then calculation of the transpulmonary pressure gradient pulmonary vascular resistance to get the full picture and to make a correct uh, diagnosis. And with your saturation run, we also know that there's also no uh, intracardiac shunt too. So we have Absolutely. a complete diagnosis. Absolutely.